Good morning, and welcome to the 2022 Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing at UC Davis commencement. My name is Sam Bishop Green, and I serve as Chief of Staff to Dean Stephen Cavanaugh. Before we begin, I would like to ask that you pause and reflect as we acknowledge the land. The ceremony is being held in the Mandavi Center on the Davis campus, which sits on Putwin lands. The following video was recorded in the Native American Contemplative Garden a few feet from where you sit at this moment. We should take a moment to acknowledge the land on which we are gathered. For thousands of years, this land has been the home of Putwin people. Today, there are three federally recognized Putwin tribes. Kachil Dihi Band of Wintun Indians of the Calusa Indian Community, Quetzal Dihi Wintun Nation, and Yocha Dehi Wintun Nation. The Putwin people have remained committed to the stewardship of this land over many centuries. It has been cherished and protected as elders have instructed the young through generations. We are honored and grateful to be here today on their traditional homelands. Thank you. And as she mentioned, we are honored and grateful to be here on their traditional lands. Our distinguished graduating class of 2022 includes six candidates for the Doctor of Philosophy, 66 candidates for the Masters of Science, and 63 for the Master of Health Services. Today, the mace is carried by our marshal, Dr. Janice Bell, Associate Dean for Research, Director for the Director, Doctor of Philosophy program, Western Health Advantage Endowed Professor, and professor at the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing at UC Davis. After the processional, Jennifer Sherrill from the UC Davis Department of Music will then sing the national anthem. Please take a moment to silence your cell phones. However, we do encourage pictures, so keep your phones or cameras handy. Also make note of the emergency exits in your area. And for families with small children and babies, please stay for the ceremony, even if the kids get restless or fussy. We want all families to enjoy today. If you do, however, need a moment, the ceremony is broadcast on the television monitors in the lobby for your enjoyment. Thank you, and enjoy the ceremony.
the 2022 commencement of the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing at the University of California, Davis is now assembled. Audience, please rise and remain standing for the national anthem as sung by Jennifer Sherrill. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the Audience and participants, please be seated. Distinguished guests, Dean Stephen Cavanaugh, Dean of the School of Nursing. Uh, thank you, Dr. Bell. Uh, thank you, Jennifer. And uh, thank you, Curved Air. Good morning. Good morning, indeed, and welcome to the commencement of the Betty R. E. Moore School of Nursing here at Davis. We welcome you to celebrate the dedication, intellectual effort, and the resilience of the classes of both 2021 and 2022. Congratulations. Now, I'm thrilled that we can actually be here together to mark this occasion. When I joined the school, we didn't have this event. Uh, we know why and there have been far too many commencements missed. Yet here we are, and thanks to the, the perseverance of our students, the commitment of our, commitment of our wonderful faculty, some of whom you'll see on the stage here, and the wavering support of staff and all of you, the audience, families and friends, we have 135 aspiring change agents ready to go out into the world and make a real difference. They also join uh, over 900 alumni who every day fulfill our mission of optimum health and health equity for all. Today, we have guests with us to celebrate this event. And I'm pleased to announce some, those folks to you. And I would ask them to stand and be recognized. Uh, first, Charles Melton, president of the Cal Aggie Alumni Association Board of Directors. Thank you. <laughs> Philip Cass, Vice Provost of Academic Affairs. Lauren Lindstrom, Dean of the School of Education. Thank you, Lauren. Christine Lovely, Interim Vice Chancellor for Finance, Operation and Administration. Mackenzie Smith, University Librarian and Vice Provost of Digital Scholarship. Rao Unava, Dean of the Graduate School of Management. And Shelley Blosis, Associate Professor, Department of Psychology. Uh, 
And today I'm especially pleased uh, to announce that our Chancellor, Gary S. May, will be joining us today, Chancellor, uh, who will be conferring the degrees upon our students, your family members today. In fact, back in 2015, Dr. May earned the Presidential Award for Excellence in Science, Mathematics and Engineering, uh, Engineering Mentoring from President Obama. Uh, the recipients were honored for transforming students' futures and our futures too. I think one could argue that all our futures, students, faculty, staff, and supporters, have been transformed over the past two years. For the doctoral students behind me, they entered the school uh, in 2018, never knowing what was quite round the corner from them. For our master's entry in nursing, our physician assistants, and our family nurse practitioner students, they chose to embark upon their graduate education in the middle of a pandemic. I'm sure everyone had doubts. And frankly, if I'm honest with you, we had doubts too. These misgivings, however, have been overcome by simply hard work, the skills of faculty and staff, and we've overcome the skepticism that we have, uh, that we have entered into. We aren't the early, early one with reservations, but we've had to adapt and manage change. And I'm proud of everyone on the stage, students, faculty, and staff, as we've persevered and planned for success. Our, quickly, our, our faculty, for example, quickly adapted to the innovations in online education. Our UC Davis colleagues committed our students so they could stay in their clinical experiences and finish on time. Our students leaned into their internal passion to, to perceive and, and be successful despite all the external turmoil. As a school, we've created a blueprint for the future refined our research program focus, identified areas where we will make global impact and enhance our contributions to become an indispensable partner with UC Davis Health and the Davis campus. We look to the future with increasing optimism. For the past two years, we've celebrated this event virtually, uh, but today, finally, we get to celebrate together. And this is a great day. <clears throat> Michelle Obama uh, once said, you may not always have a comfortable life and you will not always be able to solve the world's problems at once, but don't ever under underestimate the importance you can have because history has shown us that courage can be contagious and hope can take on a life of its own. I now have the great pleasure to welcome uh, Chancellor May to the podium. <clears throat> Chancellor May is a highly engaged leader with a passion for helping others succeed. He believes uh, in su student success and it's best judged by how we enhance the lives of others. Throughout his career, he's championed diversity, equity and inclusion in both higher education and the workplace, especially in the, t in the STEM fields of science, technology, nursing, mathematics, and nursing. Mm. Okay. Uh, Chance, Chancellor May believes uh, in the important uh, impact of academia and industry as they come together for a common good. He launched Aggie, Aggie Square in 2018 to spur economic growth in Sacramento and help create jobs and new opportunities for education. His vision as UC Davis's seventh chancellor is to lead the university to new heights in academic excellence, inclusion, public service, and upward mobility for students from all backgrounds. I'm delighted to introduce to you uh, Chancellor Gary S. May. Thank you, Dean Kavanaugh. Welcome, distinguished members of the stage party, faculty, staff, families, friends, and most importantly, the graduating students of the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing. You know, these past couple of years, I've really missed this view. Nothing beats the sea of caps and gowns and the collective joy of our graduates reaching this wonderful milestone. Graduates, you did it. 
You persevered during a global pandemic. You continued to study and learn and work, often on the front lines of COVID-19, during some of the most challenging times in our history. And you never gave up. With each struggle, you grew stronger. With each setback, you grew more determined. With each accomplishment, you grew more confident. You set a goal that now comes to life on this glorious day. Just a few years ago, you could never have imagined the challenges you would face along your academic journey. The global pandemic turned our lives and our world upside down. But here we are now, together, and the future is wide open. This is a moment to reflect, to recharge, and most importantly, to reconnect. Reconnect with your cohort. We know the School of Nursing's cohort model creates lifelong connections. Now's the time to reach out and walk through this postgraduate journey together. Many of you were involved with student interest groups during your studies. Some of you even started new ones. Keep those connections strong. Reach out to the people from those groups who shared your passions. They will likely evolve, as you do, to advance those interests as professionals. Many of you saw firsthand the pandemic's disproportionate impact on certain communities. You stepped up to serve in vaccine clinics and to help with TB testing and Healthy Davis Together COVID testing. Now is the time to carry this mission forward into your professional lives. Reconnect with your faculty. UC Davis faculty are truly dedicated to your success, and that doesn't end the day you graduate. Your faculty members are still here to support you throughout your transition uh, to your research or practice. Reconnect with family and friends, those who are here celebrating you today. We've learned the importance of self-care during the pandemic. And sometimes the best self-care means connecting with loved ones, laughing with old and new friends, and putting me time and family time first. Finally, reconnect with your dreams. Remind yourself why you started down this path. Helping others and leading with scientific knowledge are at the very heart of your mission. Healthcare is changing, and you are the future. You are the change agents who will keep our communities healthy and ensure that everyone has access to quality care, regardless of race, gender, sexual orientation, citizenship, or socioeconomic class. You represent a diverse group of professionals, healthcare leaders, providers, clinicians, researchers, and the educators of tomorrow. As a UC Davis graduate, you have an excellent foundation of skills and knowledge to accomplish anything you set out to do. Classes of 2021 and 2022, you deserve all of the congratulations and the utmost respect. We applaud your tenacity. We applaud your excellence and your adaptability. And we can't wait to see how you'll make your mark on the world. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Chancellor May, for reminding us the importance of reconnecting. My goodness, you're sounding very much like a nurse. Then. Some of those comments are very, very powerful indeed. Thank you. Uh, someone who is uh, reconnecting with, uh, with Alma Mater this morning is our keynote speaker, uh, Aaron King. Uh, Aaron is a registered nurse and assistant manager at UC Davis Health. Uh, he is a 2021 graduate of our own Master's of Science in Nursing Science and Healthcare Leadership degree. While a student, Erin's research focused on the prevalence of microaggressions and the impact on satisfaction and, and symptoms of depression in graduate nursing students of color. Erin serves on the executive board of the Capital City Black Nurses Association, a local chapter of the National Black Nurses Association, which was founded, by the way, by alumni of our own school. He also serves as co-chair for the health committee of the NAACP in Sacramento. Uh, Aaron is multi-talented. As a nurse leader, he seeks to increase diversity in the nursing workforce through outreach, particularly in the Hispanic and black communities. Aaron uh, co-authored the book, The Diaries of a Resilient Black Nurse, an anthology of struggles and achievements of black nurses in America. And this fall, we welcome him back to our school as he joins our Doctor of Philosophy degree program. I have the greatest pleasure of introducing to you uh, Aaron King. <clears throat> uh, 
Hello. Friends, family, faculty, and most importantly, graduates. What a great day it is. What a great day it is to be together. I feel truly honored to be the invited as the first alumni to speak at the graduation for the School of Nursing. We have all been virtual for so long, and what a gift it is to be in person. My first thought entering this building was, wow, look at all these beautiful people. My second thought, wow, look at all these people. <laughs> I thought as I walked in that maybe, that we should maybe just leave those doors open to get the circulation going a little bit in here, but I digress. I know I started by saying that I am truly honored to be invited to speak, but what I should have said is, I'm hella surprised. <laughs> Anyone that knows me knows that it's a bad idea to give me a mic. The mic has always skipped me. Weddings, retirement parties, graduations, <laughs> baptisms, once in church, but the pastor said he didn't, but we're not gonna go into those details. Officially, graduations are meant to celebrate the accomplishments of the students, but I know they were never on this journey alone. You were helped by partners, parents, children, friends, and neighbors. Many of those people are here today, and let's all take time to live in this moment. Forget the traffic awaiting us on the causeway, the Warriors Celtics game, or that gas is slowly creeping to $7. You all made this possible for all the people on this stage, and please give yourself a round of applause. I am truly impressed with the journey of these students. A large majority of these students began and ended this program with a virtual component due to social distancing. A special six of our graduates entered the pandemic two years into their program, never knowing if they would have the opportunity to walk across the stage. And a good number still have three months of school left, but nevertheless, we celebrate. We celebrate this, this as a product of all those late nights and early mornings, those missed weekends and canceled dinner plans. We celebrate the end of this chapter together in the beginning of the next. As I began to write this speech, I promised myself that I wouldn't follow the tradition of many other keynote speakers and share some personal story. It wasn't long before I realized that eight to 10 minutes of speaking is a long time. The first thing I thought to share was a story of one of my patients that swallowed a remote control. Although it sounds a bit funny, it truly is a story of perseverance and self-determination. I narrowed it down to a single story, a story about me, a story about my family. As a nurse, I often humbly respond to a thank you with, I'm just doing my job. It wasn't until I was on the other side of this conversation that I felt that what many patients and their family members experience. I was sincerely thankful for the work of first responders, nurses, doctors, MPs, and PAs. In September, my four-year-old son had a fall from the second story window. As I made my way down what seemed like the longest journey to the stairs, my whole life flashed before my eyes. I had no idea what I would find in my backyard. First responders made it to my house in seven minutes, but it felt like hours. My son, Keo, was rushed to UC Davis Health, my job. As time slowed down, somehow it felt like the healthcare workers team just sped up. Keo sustained a fracture to, that required neurosurgery. After a long day in the OR, we spent three days in a pediatric ICU where we were visited by teams of surgeons and providers almost around the clock. Every interaction made us feel as we were the only family in the hospital. Every smile felt sincere and warm. When we were finally released home, we received hugs, hugs that felt everlasting. Every day I wake up to see his face, hold his hand and hear his voice. I walk past the pictures on the wall, and I'm truly thankful for the role that healthcare workers played in my life, his life. This is the role you all will play. You will go on to impact the lives of others in ways you may never know or never truly understand. You all will leave this stage today with new titles that come with 
immense responsibility. For every story like my own, there are dozens and dozens of other stories where there were negative outcomes due to the failure of our healthcare system. I am confident that this School of Nursing has instilled in you all a solid foundation of knowledge and care. Whether you leave this stage to be caregivers, providers, educators, or researchers, Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing has prepared you to become leaders in healthcare, change makers. This, my friends, is not a paid advertisement. I am living proof, just as many others that I've graduated with and before me. I don't want to leave you all today with sad thoughts of my son. I like to tell people that he may have fell out of the window, but he bounced back. <laughs> I want to first leave you with a huge, huge congratulations on this major accomplishment and be the first to say to you all, thank you. Hello, I'm Dr. Amy Nichols, the Associate Dean for Academics and Clinical Professor at the School of Nursing. I'm here today to announce the 2022 awards for student excellence and dean's leadership. The Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing at UC Davis cultivates academic excellence and addresses urgent societal needs through five core attributes, community connection, diversity and inclusion, leadership, innovation solutions, and collaborations. After nominations from their peers, five students are selected for exemplifying these values. Students, when I call your name, please come forward to receive your award from Dean Kavanaugh, who I would like to join me now. Please remain on stage so we can recognize all five participants at the end. The first award for excellence in leadership goes to Jua Sun. <laughs> Jua Meppen's classmates say she has a knack for bringing her positivity. She's, she's served in leadership roles in the Graduate Student Association, Cuddle Buddies, and the Collaboration for Health Equity Conference. Her positivity and integrity inspire others. Her team building and respect for everyone fosters collaboration. Most importantly, she worked not only to be a great provider, but a valued peer. Congratulations, Jua. The award for excellence in community connection goes to Jessica Dyatlov. Jessica is a member of the Masters of Science Family Nurse Practitioner Cohort. Her fellow students and faculty say she brings focus and passion to her profession. She is committed to the well-being of her peers and has led the cohort in diversity and inclusion initiatives. Jessica served as co-class representative and initiated the development of strategies to improve student well-being in the NP and PA communities. Congratulations, Jessica. The award for excellence in collaboration goes to Irene Turner. Irene is a physician assistant who her classmates say is excellent at connecting with others. She has collaborated with different student programs, including UC Davis student-run clinics and has the ability to bring great ideas on how they can work together for the good of the community. Her ability to communicate and express herself is great for networking. Congratulations, Irene. The Award for Excellence in Innovative Solutions goes to Aldrin Venzen. Aldrin is a member of the of this year's graduating PhD cohort leverages his experience as a bedside nurse and health data scientist to make better decisions in patient care. In his course of doctoral study, Aldrin applies innovative data sources, including social media and cutting edge data science methodologies. 
to understand the role of social determinants of health in health disparities. His dissertation applied these strategies using social media data to understand vaccine sentiments during the pandemic. Congratulations, Aldrin. The Award for Excellence in Diversity and Inclusion goes to Sophia Crosby. Sophia is not able to be here today. Her fellow MEPIN classmates say she is always pushing them to do better, to be more inclusive. She successfully worked to make positive change for the LGBTQ plus education and inclusivity within the program's curriculum. Sophia has also founded the student interest group to advocate for better education around LGBTQ health care. She is a steadfast advocate for marginalized populations and provides patient care through the lens of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Congratulations, Sophia. On behalf of everyone at the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing at UC Davis, we want to congratulate today's award recipients for your achievements and serving as examples of these core values. Yes, stay just a minute so we can get that group photo. All right, now it's my pleasure to announce the year's Dean's Leadership Awards. These awards seek to honor staff and faculty in three areas, diversity, equity and inclusion, teaching and research. Awards, when I call your name, please come to the front of the stage to receive your recognition and take a photo with Dean Kavanaugh. Let's begin with Excellence in Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Award, which recognizes the rewards and efforts of the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing, staff and faculty members who create and support an environment where health equity, diversity and inclusion are valued. The 2022 Diversity and Inclusion Award goes to Dr. Susan Adams. <laughs> Dr. Adams is unable to be here today with us. She has tire tirelessly in tireless enthusiasm for interprofessional experiences. Her commitment in integrating principles of diversity, equity, and inclusion makes her an ambassador for our nursing school. In her many pursuits, she focuses on diversity and inclusion in a myriad of ways. Her inclusion of the community and diverse learners brings together creative groups of people to solve access and issues to provide services in new ways. Dr. Adams represents our school and the university in creating new pathways for community experiences. So congratulations to Dr. Adams, wherever you are. The Excellence in Teaching Award recognizes and rewards School of Nursing faculty members for their outstanding efforts in teaching and their impact on the education of our students. The 2022 Teaching Award goes to Gordon Worley. Those who have worked with and learned from Assistant Clinical Professor Worley says he's a wonderful professor and mentor. He is always willing to help students, truly cares about their education, and that he cares about patient care. His professional interest in wilderness medicine prompted him against all odds to create a rotation for it. During COVID-19, Professor Worley stepped up to teach pathophysiology when other faculty were out ill, all still while serving the president of the Sacramento chapter of the California Association of Nurse Practitioners. His nominations include that Professor Worley is an all-around wonderful human. Congratulations, Professor Worley. The Excellence in Research Award recognizes Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing faculty researchers for their outstanding contributions and accomplishments in nursing science research. The 2022 award research goes to Dr. Julie Bidwell, who is not able to be here today. Dr. Bidwell is a fantastic early stage investigator with a bright future ahead of her. This year, she was awarded an NIHK award, the first in our school, her research is a cutting edge using didactic methodology to study symptom recognition and reporting in patients with primary heart failure and their family caregivers. 
Fellow faculty says she's productive, collaborative, and a delightful colleague. Doctoral students and postdoc scholars say she is a fantastic mentor. Congratulations, Dr. Bidwell, wherever you are. On behalf of the leadership of the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing, we want to congratulate this year's Dean Leadership Award recipients for your achievements and continuous dedication to the in the field of nursing. Now I want to invite Dean Kavanaugh back to the podium to recognize our retiring faculty. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Nichols. Uh, as the cycle of academic service, faculty sometimes retire. Uh, some return for instruction, others venture into new pursuits. Whatever the case, their contributions to our students, research, and the mission of this wonderful school must be recognized. And so we have three folks uh, I would like to recognize today, and certainly some are here, and I would certainly ask that they stand and be recognized when I read their names out. Uh, the first uh, is Dr. Susan Adams, as you know, uh, isn't able to be here today. But Dr. Susan Adams has been with the school since 2016. She's brought her leadership experience and has also been elected a county supervisor into, the, into uh, leadership, into our coursework. She has championed in professional education across UC Davis Health, involving nursing, the School of Medicine, and others. So uh, again, uh, Susan, thank you very much. Uh, secondly, uh, I would invite uh, Dr. Terry Harvath to stand, please. Uh, most of you will know uh, Dr. Harvath, who joined our school in 2015 as a clinical professor and founding uh, professor of the MEPIN program, the program director. She became our executive associate dean and channeled her expertise of older adults into lifelike simulations. For the past four years, she served as the founding director of the Family Caregiving Institute and senior director for strategies initiated by the school. Uh, Terry, thank you very much. And, and for today, uh, Gordon, Gordon Worley. Uh, as you'd heard earlier, Gordon's love and expertise for wilderness medicine has enhanced coursework for our PAs and our FMP students. A great mentor, a great person for working in clinical situations, uh, which really has become important. And of course, his great love of precepting students in the emergency department. For all three of these faculty who've uh, contributed so much to all the students and the very life of our school, uh, I thank you very much. We now turn to our student speakers, our graduates. The four cohorts, as well as faculty, selected a student to represent each of their programs today and share their experiences and hopes for the future. Representing the master's entry program in nursing is Jeffrey White. Jeffrey. Wow, good morning and thank you. Um, first, I wanna express my gratitude to the faculty and staff who helped make this event possible and to the friends and family gathered here today to bear witness to the festivities. Now, as my fellow cohort mates uh, would most likely attest, um, I sometimes can get a little long-winded when I go off the cuff, which is my preferred style, but uh, to keep this to a tight two to three minutes per request, I've prepared my remarks today. When I was voted to speak on behalf of our cohort, I was honored and humbled. And maybe it's the dad in me. Hi, Lucy. Hi, Rosalind. Hi, sweetie. But I'm a fan of imagery and object lessons. And as I took some time to ruminate back on our experiences together, I envisioned an accordion. Now follow me here. We all started out in our various corners and of the state and country for that matter, 
diligently working on our prerequisites just for the shot at getting in. Then, we were pressed together for a very intense and stretching 18-month graduate school experience. We've since parted ways and gone back to our homes and communities to take and hopefully not throw away our shot at doing the work we've set out to do. Today, both in person and via webcast, we come back together again to mark this special occasion and to celebrate. Thinking back to when we each found out that we had been accepted to the program, and I'll speak for myself, I was so appreciative for the opportunity to attend this school, and now here we are at the cherry on top of the experience. In moments such as these, we're flooded with memories from simulation days, bike commutes, late night clinical rotations and study sessions, GSA, Zoom hangouts, all those group presentations. I'm gonna give that one some room to breathe. Uh, and everything in between. We all worked so hard to be here. That hard work continued through a nursing school experience that was always in flux through some truly incredible, uncertain, and scary times. Yet here we are. Today, some of my fellow graduates are already on to some amazing work experiences, immediately putting their degrees to work, and I am in awe of your accomplishments. But as we take a beat and pause to commemorate that this happened, I can't help but be filled with pride for what we accomplished with our teams of people in our corners, some of whom are here today. So before we get ready to stretch back out, to go make the music of service in our communities, I wanted to press in one more time and congratulate you. We did it. You did it. Thank you. Thank you, Jeffrey. Uh, representing the Physician Assistant Program is Tony Ho. Bad at public speaking, but okay. Thank you. thank you, Dean Kavanaugh, faculty, and welcome family, guests, and graduates. I want to start off with the most influential people in my life chose not to go to college. I know that's ironic since I'm here getting a master's degree, but not as ironic as my cohort selecting the most quiet person to speak here. Or like when Dr. Pearl says, all of your questions for the cardio exam is on your 800 plus slides. <laughs> or when Professor Iman says, I would remember this if I were you, and it would never show up. <laughs> and I have yet to see Jones or no Jones. Does that make sense? We all nodded, but no, Dr. Liu, it did not. <laughs> But in all seriousness, I know you have guessed the most influential people are my parents. They taught me the meaning of geiko, lo geikon, and that means adversity brings wisdom. And as I was writing this speech, I reflected back on the sacrifices that my parents have made for me to stand here today. So in your seats, I encourage you to reflect on the growth that you've had in the past two years. We literally had so many huge life events that occurred in the world during our program. To list a few, do we dare mention our friend COVID-19 and COVID and Zoom University? We chose to enter a rigorous program during a pandemic with the crisis in Armenia, Ukraine, and other political shifts in the world. It felt like yesterday we were interviewing and then asking to be flexible with major changes during the didactic year. 
We got fire hosed with conditions, missed out on in-person practices in anatomy lab, but our class received the highest pack rat scores and scored above NAV average in recent history. <laughs> so I guess business on top and comfy on the bottom wasn't bad after all. So entering clinical year, the imposter syndrome was real. There were so many uncertainties with our clinical rotations during, due to COVID restrictions. We were grateful to be back in person and received many great reviews from our preceptors. My favorite moments were educating and advocating for our PA profession. When patients asked, what is a PA? I've encountered many universities in my life and for the first time I'm sharing them on a public platform. And it's not because I'm ashamed of who I am, but it's because I feel real supported at this moment. So I wanna share my own adversities. I know, my last name is Ho. My parents are Vietnamese immigrants. I'm part of the LGBT community. And I have a high-pitched voice. But I will be a physician assistant. So I hope stating my adversities will encourage you to accept your own. This is such a bittersweet moment, and I would cherish my time at UC Davis, but I'm excited to start a new chapter in my life. We had our independent journeys to be in our seats today, but no matter the outcome, I hoped that your adversities will soon be utilized as wisdom. So to my graduates, you are enough, you are competent, you have all of us in, the, in your back pockets. And congratulations, thank you. Uh, Tony, thank you for those uh, powerful words. Thank you. Uh, representing the Family Nurse Practitioner Program is uh, Sandra Camba. Oh my goodness, Tani, how do I follow that? <laughs> that was beautiful, thank you. Distinguished guests, faculty, family and friends, and class of 2022, welcome. <laughs> it's such an honor to be here today and speaking on behalf of the 2022 nurse practitioner graduates. That feels good. When I received the email from Dean Kavanagh to speak today, my nerves got the better of me. I found myself Googling profound speeches, profound phrases, for fear of sounding unpolished. But really, it was Maya Angelou's poem, Phenomenal Woman, that kept tugging at my heart. Not because I'm a phenomenal woman, but because these here are phenomenal humans. Maybe I can take this off. <laughs> Many of us, we're experts in our own rights. Nurse managers, charge nurses, ICU, L&D, med surge, telemetry nurses, and yet we embarked on this journey. It's in the way that we walked into the vulnerability of being novice learners of gay. Being humbled by our fellow PA students who seemed much more abreast at anatomy and biochemistry that we took many moons ago. Even when we contemplated switching programs to programs that seemed a little bit more manageable, we did it anyway. Phenomenal humans. At a time when our nation was crippled by the COVID pandemic, and you were buried deep into the demands of this program. It's in the way that you answered the call, a call of duty, knowing that your nation needed you, 
Your communities needed you. Your co-workers needed you. Your families needed you. You answered the call knowing that you are nurses first. Even as you feared exposing yourself to COVID, even as you, as you feared exposing your families and your classmates to the pandemic, you did it anyway. Phenomenal humans. Class of 2022, one of our own navigated motherhood for the first time in the midst of this beautiful chaos, and she did it again. <laughs> Whew. Not one, but two of us planned beautiful weddings in the midst of it all. It's in the way that each one of you managed your own Zoom fatigue, and still you homeschooled your children. The way that you continuously advocated for an even more inclusive curriculum to ensure that you can give optimum care to each and every patient, regardless of color, gender, or anything the way that you each supported each other through it all. I don't know how you did it, but you did it anyway. Phenomenal humans. I'm inspired by your tenacity, determination, and passion for this hard work. We couldn't have done it alone without our faculty and loved ones. Thank you, faculty for both challenging us and inspiring us to be the best provider that we can be. For providing that space that gave us hope and courage to ask the difficult questions, because it's in questioning that we affect change and grow. Thank you, loved ones, for your patience and tenderness through this, our journey. Mm. Yes. Because our accomplishments are just as much yours as they are ours. Class of 2022, I believe that each one of us is walking away from this institution with one or two things. Let your takeaways mold the providers that you become. As for me, I walk into this new familiar with my head held high because I know that there's strength in vulnerability. I know that these African proverbs, that it takes a village, that if you want to go fast, go alone, but if you want to go far, go together, and not, just and not just proverbs, because I lived them. Thank you, faculty, for making the call. Thank you, class of 2022, for answering the call. I'm a better person and provider for all of you. Go on and be phenomenal, phenomenal humans. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you, Sandra. Uh, very compelling words, weren't they? Uh, representing the Doctor of Philosophy program is K.K. Vang. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Dean Kavanaugh, Chancellor May, our distinguished guests, faculty, families, friends, and most importantly, our graduating class at the Betty I. Room Moore School of Nursing. It is a great honor to stand here today to represent the graduating PhD class of 2022. On behalf of all of us, I would like to take this opportunity to thank everyone for joining us in this memorable occasion 
and to thank our family, our friends, and the faculty for supporting us for the last four years. I would especially like to thank Dr. Cheryl Katz for being my mentor and someone who never stopped believing in me and her students. I am sad that Dr. Katz, amongst many other faculty, cannot be here today, but I want to recognize and acknowledge all the faculty at the Betty R. Me Moore School of Nursing for their ongoing efforts for helping and watching their students succeed. My name is Gao Gangku Mo Wang Yi Wang, known to many as KK. I'm sure anyone in the School of Nursing can tell you that the last several years of our program has not been easy. But let me tell you what was not easy. Have you ever filled out an application for a PhD program? Now that's not easy. And if you haven't, let me tell you all about it. First, you go through the motions of filling out a basic application with a bunch of questions. What is your name? What gender do you identify yourself as? What race or ethnicity or background are you? What is your academic history? Now, do you have any awards or honors that you have been blessed with? And what program of interest are you interested in? And by the time you get to this point, you think you're done, right? No, not really. It's actually only the beginning. You are now required to write multiple essays justifying why you deserve to get into your program of choice. First off, you have your statement of purpose. You are limited to 4,000 words, and just when you press save and next, there's another essay question. What is your personal history and diversity statement? Another 4,000 words. Okay, I'm done, right? No, you're not. There's the research and professional interest statement, followed by the future goal statement, followed by more questions about how do you meet the criteria as a graduate fellowship to promote diversity at the University of California, Davis? And this goes on for many, many, many more pages of questions of possible nursing scholarships that you, could, you might be eligible to apply for. By the time you are done and you have pressed saved and filed, you are now looking at 25 to 40 pages of an application that has been submitted to the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing at the University of California, Davis, for consideration. If you have not been scared out of your mind by, from this application process, or if you have not already quit by the first five pages of the social demographic questions, I applaud you for hanging in there because you are the rare few who will be submitting your application into a PhD prepared program. And if you haven't figured it out by now, this is just a small speck of what the next four years of your life is going to be like. Endless reading, writing, and thought-provoking questions and answers. Now, if you're gonna ask me why am I telling you this, each year, 2,300 completed applications are submitted globally for a PhD program in nursing. Only 1,700 will meet the admissions requirement. 217, sadly, will be turned away even though they are qualified applicants. To get accepted into a PhD prepared program at this point is a huge accomplishment that many do not realize that our graduates had to go through. What's an even bigger accomplishment is that only a select few will go on to complete their program, submit their dissertation, and graduate. In a field of an estimated 4.2 million nurses, less than 1% will hold a PhD degree. We, the PhD in nursing science and healthcare leadership class of 2022 are that select few. The less than 1%, a rarity in the field of nursing, and I want to commend you for this huge accomplishment that so few have achieved. Orison Sweat, Martin once said, success is not measured by what you have accomplished, but by the opposition you have encountered and the courage with which you have maintained the struggle against overwhelming odds. Overwhelming odds. Overwhelming odds, my friends and my families, is an understatement. 
As an academic institution, we all faced overwhelming odds these last four years. We started our program during the yellow fires with poor air quality requiring classes to be canceled, rolling power outages, and most overwhelmingly, the pandemic. During uncertain times, we lost loved ones, neighbors, colleagues, peers, and many, many patients. During our schooling, we were tasked to do the impossible while many of us worked the front lines and were expected to continue to thrive in a program in what may seem unimaginable at the time. We watch each other go down rabbit holes, hear ongoing lectures about iterative processes and how it's gonna help us grow and refine our scholarly projects. There was moments that we cried together and other moments that we uplifted each other to achieve what may seem an impossible dream. We talk about interpretive dancing and how through our emotions, we can express ourselves and our research interests. We celebrated many new adventures together new jobs, moving into new homes, even the birth of a new baby. But as I reflect back to those essay questions on that PhD application, what is your diversity statement? What are your research goals and your future goals? I stand before you and I see those statements shining through our PhD graduates. We have been blessed at the University of California Davis with the ability to learn alongside great minds with a variety of backgrounds, knowledge, and expertise. Our program is unique in that I get to study alongside and will be graduating with experts in social work, public health, nursing informatics and analytics, and clinical nurse specialists with expertise in gerontology and traumatic brain injury. The work and research of these graduates may be very different in very different fields and approaches, but I want to highlight that our educational experience allowed us to dedicate our work in addressing disparities, issues in vulnerability, and issues in underrepresented populations, and the ability to transform healthcare to address local, national, and global health and nursing issues. Our program is also unique in that we have been graciously funded by the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation. Thank you, Gordon and Betty Moore. Your vision to advance bold change system changes for future generations allows us to be here today to be ready to lead. And our educational success would not have been possible without your generous donation. My graduating classmates, you are a rarity. The work that you will be doing today tomorrow, and in the future will have exponential impact in newfound knowledge and in the passion that you bring to your respective fields. While there's only six of us standing here today, we stand here today as the future nursing leaders, researchers, educators, and individuals who will be experts in improving patient care, healthcare policy, disease management, and nursing practice. I leave you today with the words of Harriet Tubman. Every great dream begins with a dreamer. Always remember, you have within you the strength, the patience, and the passion to reach for the stars to change the world. It was through your dreams that led you here today. Congratulations, my fellow classmates, class of 2022. You overcame insurmountable challenges, yet your resilience and courage allowed you to persevere. May your potential surpass any limitations and your passion to thrive never perish. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, KK. And, and thanks to everyone for those uh, wonderful words of encouragement and support for each other. Um, now we're getting to the part of the... Um, uh, the morning, which I think you've really all come for, which is the conferring and presentation of degrees. And at this point, I would uh, like to welcome uh, our Marshal, Dr. Janice Bell, and our Chancellor, Gary May, uh, to the podium, uh, where Dr. Bell will present our graduates, Chancellor May, for conferral. Um, Dr. Bell.
The degrees conferred by the University of California attest to the scholastic achievement of the recipients. They represent the fulfillment of the university's primary duty of providing an academically excellent education. Will the candidates for the degree Master of Science in Nursing please rise? On behalf of the Academic Senate faculty within the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing, I hereby recommend to Chancellor May and Dean Kavanaugh awarding of the Master of Science Nursing degree to those students who have completed all degree requirements. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Regents of the University of California, I confer upon you the degree Master of Science in Nursing. Master of Science in Nursing students prepare to come forward. MEPIN Program Director, Shanna Ruggenberg, please join us in the front of the stage. Graduates of the Master's Entry Program in Nursing completed their coursework back in December. We hosted a traditional pinning ceremony at that time to signal the formal transition from students to nursing professionals. In the past six months, many embarked upon their careers as registered nurses to make the difference they dreamed of when they started their journey with us. We congratulate all of you on your accomplishments. Students, please come forward when your name is announced. Brittany Nava Contreras. Myra Susanna Contreras. Ku Her. <laughs> Kathleen May Galinato Kampasu. <laughs> Sama Katib. Amanda Lynn Kubera. Claudia Lopez Orozco. Jacqueline Martinez Bicera. Megan McCaffrey. Kylie Gabrielle Palacio. Daniela Regalado. Charmin Saeed. Jua San. Samantha Caitlin Tam. Diana Sepulveda Toscano. Atif Urez. Michelle No Bang. Jeffrey White.
The degrees conferred by the University of California attest to the scholastic achievement of the recipients. They represent the fulfillment of the university's primary duty of providing an academically excellent education. Candidates for the degree Master of Health Services Physician Assistant Studies, please rise. On behalf of the Academic Senate faculty within the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing, I hereby recommend to Chancellor May and Dean Kavanaugh awarding of the Master of Health Services Physician Assistant Study Degree to those students who have completed all degree requirements. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Regents of the University of California, I confer upon you the degree Master of Health Sciences Physician Assistant Studies. Master of Health Services Physician Assistant Studies students prepare to come forward. PA Program Director Jeff Pearl and Assistant Director Teresa Thetford, please join us in front of the stage. Graduates of the 2022 Master of Health Services Physician Assistant Studies class complete 27 months of rigorous coursework and experiential rotations. Not only have these future PAs learned the clinical knowledge needed for their careers, but at the School of Nursing, they develop the critical thinking skills to enable them to lead teams for better patient care. They also develop an appreciation for different perspectives and collaboration when working in interprofessional teams on evidence-based research projects, and they've done all of that during a pandemic. We are eager to see how you improve care in our communities, students, Please come forward when your name is announced. Sierra Arnott. Christine Babayan. <laughs> Paulia Baghei. <laughs> Justin Blyde. <laughs> Helen Cheong. Brian Clark. <laughs> Caitlin Megan Consol. <laughs> Cody Dam. <laughs> Austin Davis Hunter. Veselina Doncheva. <laughs> Mallory Flisher. <laughs> Emery Ganzon. <laughs> Maria Eliza Garcia. Jared Gorter. Mara Hall. Delaney Hansen. Tony Ho. Kingsley Lee. Claire Jennings Bledsoe.
David Jones. Lacey Jane Cap. Alan Lee. Samantha Kiesling. <laughs> Haley Martin. Sarah S. Matty. Rachel Diane McAfee. Michaela Morris. <laughs> Brian Newton. <laughs> Patricia Ng. <laughs> Philip Nguyen. Rachel Seeley. <laughs> Helena Nigo. <laughs> Jacqueline Olympias. <laughs> Malia Pinal. Cheyenne Quatch. <laughs> Olivia Gabrielle Quijano. <laughs> Jocelyn Ramirez. <laughs> Monica Ramirez Cineros. Morgan Star Rory. Marjan Samimi. Kiana Ann Sanchez. Rick Shulkin. Sandra Solomon. <laughs> Jeanette Tan. <laughs> Emma Toulson. <laughs> Sonia Torres. <laughs> Diana Fung Tho Tran. <laughs> Hannah Foy Tran. <laughs> Irene Wengui Turner. <laughs> Taggart Venegas. Catherine Vo. <laughs> Brittany Volmer. <laughs> Renee Wadsworth. <laughs> Rawa Gabriawet Weldelas. Kate Wright.
to the scholastic achievement of the recipients. They represent the fulfillment of the university's primary duty of providing an academically excellent education. Candidates for the degree Master of Science Family Nurse Practitioner, please rise. On behalf of the Academic Senate faculty within the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing, I hereby recommend to Chancellor May and Dean Kavanaugh awarding of the Master of Science Family Nurse Practitioner degree to those students who have completed all degree requirements. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Regents of the University of California, I confer upon you the degree Master of Science Family Nurse Practitioner. Master of Science Family Nurse Practitioner students prepare to come forward. FNP Program Director Catherine Sexton, please join us in front of the stage. These registered nurses joined our community of learners to expand their scope of practice and serve people and families in a larger capacity. During their two years here, they benefited from a collaborative environment and innovative approaches from our faculty to prepare them for an endemic world. As graduates, they leave versed in preventive measures, technological approaches, and are prepared to advance health with their talents and skills. Students, please come forward when your name is announced. Andy Billings. <laughs> Maria Rosario de Vega. Isabella Don Santos. Jessica Dyatlov. Elisa Garcia. Araceli Gutierrez. Kristen Jord. Sandra Kamba. Marissa Counts. Anna Manziuk. Plexides Mataba. Emily Mowry. Winto Win. Anna Jasmine Perdomo. Jen Stein. Chardelaine Whitlock. Anna Justice Williams. Mother Song. The degrees conferred by the University of California attest to the scholastic achievement of the recipients. They represent the fulfillment of the university's primary duty of providing an academically excellent education. Candidates for the degree Doctor of Philosophy, please rise. On behalf of the Academic Senate faculty within the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing, I hereby recommend to Chancellor May and Dean Kavanaugh awarding of the Doctor of Philosophy degree
to those students who have completed all degree requirements. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Regents of the University of California, I confer upon you the degree Doctor of Philosophy. Doctor of Philosophy students prepare to come forward. It's an honor to announce our doctoral class, whose members have been part of our School of Nursing community for four years. They have strengthened their independent research skills through rigorous coursework, interdisciplinary collaboration, committed mentorship, and their own vision, grit, and determination. They entered before the pandemic, pushed through the shutdowns, and arrive at the other end stronger, wiser, and more dedicated than ever. Now they will tackle scientific inquiry and become even greater transformative leaders in nursing than they imagined back in 2018. Students, please come forward to be hooded when your name is announced. Michaela Davis. Michaela's dissertation highlights the impact of hospital and nursing processes and their possible relationships between patient outcomes, such as discharge disposition in trauma centers in North America. Highlighting the role of nursing quality indicators and patient-specific outcomes in trauma centers signifies the impact of nursing care in the recovery of acutely injured patients. Amelia Louise Lawless. Amelia's qualitative research study focuses on the experiences of California's rural jail mental health clinicians to focus on the individual, interpersonal, and organizational factors of providing mental health care to this vulnerable population. Preliminary results suggest that there are distinct challenges and resource concerns, creating unique challenges for these clinicians and the patients they serve. Maura Riley Albert. Maura's work explored the relationships between environmental and social factors and the ability of households with children to purchase healthy and nutritious foods. One of her key findings is that parents who feel less connected to their neighbors are more likely to be food insecure. Anna Marie Satake. Anna's qualitative study included interviews of wives who provide caregiving to their husbands with dementia. The factors which contributed to willingness or reluctance to use formal caregiving resources or support services were evaluated. Kao Kang Ku Mu Wang Yi Bang. KK surveyed over 500 Hmong American men and women to identify contextual and sociocultural factors influencing COVID 19 mitigation behaviors, such as masking, social distancing, group gatherings, and vaccination uptake. This work helps inform current and future public health initiatives targeting the Hmong American community. Aldrin Vinson. Aldrin aimed to study the United States public perception of COVID-19 vaccines using Twitter and survey data. He examined the public's tweet sentiment and various emotions in the early stage of the pandemic and examined 900 cross-sectional interviews in two rural counties in the state of California for perceptions of COVID-19 vaccines and information. Congratulations, graduates.
We're almost at the we're almost at the end. I know there'll be a lot more cheering to go uh, throughout the rest of the morning. I would like to thank Chancellor May for very much for coming with us. It's a tremendous honour to have uh, the degrees conferred by our, our Chancellor, and thank you very much for the guests who've uh, chosen to be with us today. Uh, will the graduates please rise? Yes, please rise. These folks stand before us today, accomplished risk takers and change makers, who hold the promise of making healthcare the way we all envisage, caring, inclusive, deeply intellectual, person and family centered, and of excellent quality. As graduates of this school, we are proud to call you all alumni and look forward to you becoming the providers, carers, researchers, educators, and leaders we know you will become. You also stand here because so many of you have supported us all the way through. How about we all give a final round of applause to your friends and family and everyone who has made this happen. And there's one little academic uh, tradition left over. It's the tassel thing, I've called it, where we move tassels. So, so folks, we move our tassels from our left to our right. Tim, I'm sport. It's so... It's, it's, oh no, it's all right. We have presented to you the graduating classes from 20 and 21, and we're so very proud here at the Betty Irene Moore School. Everybody's done such an amazing job. Um, and there's always a few ending things, and we're just about to the close here. Guests, may I ask you to remain seated until the recession has fully exited the hall. I do hope you will join us uh, for refreshments on the front steps. Thank you again for being with us and sharing these wonderful achievements of your students and loved ones. Thank you, everyone.